So I just bought one of the biggest hi-fi collections I have ever seen. I mean, this for sure is the biggest Morantz collection in the country, but almost 200 vintage stereos all in one place, all in collector condition, I had to have it. So before you knew it, we hopped on a plane down to San Antonio to get this giant hi-fi collection. And in this video, we're gonna show you a tour of literally everything in the collection and how we got it back to our store in Baltimore. And later in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get the master list that we compiled of all this equipment so that you, our YouTube subscribers, can get first dibs on it all. But we're gonna start with the Pioneer and then go on to the Marantz. So we're gonna start right up here. We have a Pioneer SX1000TW. This is like your late, mid to late 60s Pioneer. Very good models. Now on this, one of the cool things is the the dial, if you can see the dial, it's actually painted on the glass and it's not a separate piece like some of the newer Pioneers. They have these nice flip switches for all of your filters, your loudness, and even the Phono 1 and 2. So a lot of these models actually had two Phonos because a lot of times you'd have dual turntables. Now going down, we're going to go to the CTF cassette decks from Pioneer. We have a 6262 and then of course the more famous 9191. So they both have meters. This one has a lot larger meters. It's a great looking cassette deck. Typically at this point you're having some motor trouble with these but a fantastic very popular cassette deck from Pioneer. One of their one of their most known for early 70s. Now one of the coolest ones they've made is actually this one up here and actually it's three meters. So you have the dynamic level as well as your signal meters, right? So uh, this is one of the only cassette decks you'll find with three meters. And you have input output controls. All the controls on here are very nicely done. You can hear the you can hear the clicks, they're heavy duty controls on there. So that's a great cassette deck. Probably my favorite one just because of the three meters. Go down to the blue series, which is the next lineup. Now we get the whole blue series, I think here. So let's check them out. Uh, you get the CTF 650 and these all have really cool light up displays. I don't have them lit up here, but it's a really nice display there. Then you're gonna go up to the 850. Okay, so we have the 750. So that one's in between those two. Uh, the next model up from the 850, you're going to go with the 950, or the, sorry, this is the 9. So this is actually a different year. Got another 750 up here. The most popular models is probably going to be your 750 there. I think you really see these everywhere. When they're playing, got the meters going and going. It's, it's a beautiful sight. And then, of course, the 950, which is a larger model. Now, these have this nice cover for your pinch rollers and your tape head. And you actually just sit the tape in there. Uh, so you can see it. There's no cover that goes over top the cassette like you would see on your 9191 or even like the CTF 650, which has, you know, the cover to keep the dust out. These actually didn't have the covers and you just stick the tape right in there and play it. So this is a three head. I think that's the only three head in the series is going to be your 900 model and above. So the, or the 950 the 900 over here, they're all going to be three head models, uh, where the ones up here are going to be going to be two head. Uh, and a lot of them have, you got Dolby on them. Um, so they have all different options, can play all different types of tapes, especially the larger model like the 950. I mean, you got all kinds of controls and of course the blue lights. The blue series from Pioneer is, is very, very nice, especially when it's all put together. All right, so down here we're going to have quads from Pioneer. So they're going to have the quad scope so you can see exactly where you're positioning your speakers. And the 949... Uh, this is all the same model, just three versions of the QX949, uh, besides this one, which is an A, and I actually don't really know the difference uh, between the two, why there's an A and why there's not. I'm looking at it right now to see if I can see, and I'm, I'm not really sure. The QX949 is definitely the most popular quad receiver from Pioneer. It lights up a nice blue. Uh, you can use it as a two-channel if you want to use two-channel. Not a lot of people still do quad. Up here we have a little uh, Pioneer digital tuner. And then underneath, one of the more popular Pioneer EQs, the SG9800. So this is basically when you go into the early 80s, so all these little controls light up, which 
the SG9500, which we'll see in a second, doesn't, but I think I like the look of the SG9500 a little bit better. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you guys like certain models or any factoids that you have about any of these units, let us know. Going down, we're entering into the, the Pioneer series that I liked, all the Silver Face Pioneer separate components. We have a TX7500, which is one of their probably lower line mid-tier tuners. Uh, of course you have the you have a 6500 which is a little lower all the way up to the 9500 which is larger and we may see one of those as we go through this collection i'm not really sure yet the matching integrated amp here and all the controls on these just feel fantastic so lots of noise very nice this is the 9500 that i was talking about earlier i have one in my collection I'll dust there on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that these knobs look better uh, than, you know, what you'd have on that 9800 that we looked at a minute ago that light up. So some people like the lights, some people like, you know, the thicker silver knobs that match uh, some of the other SX collection. Gotta get down even farther. <laughs> this is an M73, and I actually don't know a whole lot about this model. The meters peak out at about 200 watts per channel, and it does A and B speakers, so two speakers. It's a little smaller in comparison height-wise to the one next to it that you might be a little more familiar with. This is the largest of the Pioneer Spec amps, the Spec 2. Uh, so this is a heavy beast right here, but I haven't seen, you don't see too many of the smaller models, so I, I think that's pretty cool. So we're going... A little bit more modern, not too much. The SXD7000, both of these are gonna be the same, one with the wood case, one without. Now these have those blue meters uh, on the top here. This you're going more into the early 80s than the 70s. You have the push buttons, uh, you get some sliders on there. So real nice amps, big and heavy amps. And talking about big and heavy, some of the heaviest amps around is Dynaco Stereo 400. That's a monster amp. Uh, very heavy. They made a model with meters, without meters. Really nice model. And all the way over here in the corner, this is Yamaha's biggest receiver. This is the 3020, another monster heavy receiver. All the Yamahas. And we'll see another one in a minute that we can probably look at a little bit better. But that's one of the heaviest Yamahas made. So we talked about the Dynaco 400 over here and how they made one with meters. And there it is right there, the Dynaco Stereo 400 with the blue meters. Same model, they just kind of added the meters there. And the 3020 that we talked about is going to be right down here. A big 3020, Yamaha's biggest receiver. I think with the Yamaha's, the lights aren't the best. I prefer the lights in a lot of other vintage receivers, but the sound really is amazing. And actually, the newer Yamaha products are made to sound just like these. So whether it's the 3020 or going up here, the next in the line is going to be your 2020. Still a very heavy, big receiver. And then you're gonna go with the 1020, which is a little more common, but still one of their very large receivers that weigh a ton. Now, earlier we saw the Spec 2, and here's the matching preamp, the Spec 1. So this is one that I have on my rack collection. I love when you turn the volume knob. You can hear that. All the knobs are gonna be very, very nice. Hear all, all of that. So everybody knows I love the Spec sets, and that is a great preamp to have. Now for accessories, you got a couple of them here. You got a high dynamic RG processor, the RG2, which is gonna have your meters here in blue, and then the SR303 reverb, which is gonna have that blinking reverb meter right there in that display. Going over here, we have another CTF750 cassette deck, very popular model, the most popular model. Nope, we got another Pioneer from the late 60s, the SX1000TW, and above that we have the 1972 SX424. That's when they really introduced the backlit uh, blue dial there. Uh, now going up to 76, we have the entry level in the Pioneer SX line, the SX450. But right next to it, we have the highest of the 1976 is the Pioneer SX1250. So this was their highest in the line in 1976. Now in 1978, they decided they were gonna do a little bit more power. So at one time, the Pioneer SX1250 was the most powerful receiver on the market. But then of course, in the Stereo Wars, a lot of other companies said, hey, no, we're gonna make more powerful stuff like Kenwood and Sansui and a number of other companies. So Pioneer went out and they said, we're going to make the most powerful receiver we can possibly do. And that's where they came out with the 1980, which is one of the most famous 
Vince's receivers, and you know, one of my favorites, it's a massive receiver. Like, trapped in all this equipment here, it doesn't look ridiculously massive, but it really is. I mean, we're talking, you know, 300 plus watts, and that's rated not what it probably actually is. So, you know, you got the meters max out around 540, so who knows uh, where that thing... I've never actually ran it uh, to see you know, with the max power and peak performance and stuff is on that one. But this is the most famous. If you've seen my channel, you've probably seen a couple. <laughs> if you've seen my channel, you've probably seen a couple of these here and there. So just a massive receiver. All right, so right here going down from the 1980 is the 980. So this is another very popular receiver from Pioneer. They have the 1280, the 1080, and then down to the 980. So it's not just a massive machine, but it's a beautiful receiver. You got the color indicators there. I really love those on all the 80 series. And then you had the most popular receivers out there ever made from Pioneer, the vintage ones, the 1978 SX 780. So the 780 is our most popular receiver still to this day, and back then it sold more than any other receiver had done. So there it is, the most popular receiver of the 70s, the SX 780 from Pioneer. Going up here, we have a very big stack. We have the Sansui 5000X, followed by the Sansui 4000. They're all going to light up with that green look. Now underneath, this is one you don't see as much. This is going to be a Sherwood S. 7910. I'm actually not too familiar with it, but I really like the way these uh, indicators or these push buttons sparkle there. So I really like that. Feels good. It's a big Sherwood. One of the biggest Sherwoods they probably have ever made. Uh, underneath, we've got some of the Sony collection, right? So you have the Sony STR V5, which has your two power meters and a tuning meter, and then giant controls in the front, which all have this nice feel to them, right? So all the controls are going to have a good feel. The version 6 is going to be a little more wattage. Uh, a couple more features. You have a sensitivity feature on there. Going down to their largest one, the V7. Got even more features. Same amount of meters, just a big... I mean, this is a big receiver. So one of the biggest Sony has probably ever made. Sansui's most famous receiver is going to be right here, right? So you have the 8080 dB from Sansui, which has the two left and right power meters right here in the center beautiful one with a nice wood case but underneath is the most famous sensory receiver the 9090. now they made two versions they made one like the one above that has a db right there for dolby has the dolby section and then one without it which is this 9090 right here now underneath this is this is what we like to see the giant sansui 9000 db Look at that, just go across. This is a massive receiver. You got a tuning and signal meter, you got power meters left and right, and all the really nice switches going all the way across. So one of the most famous, you don't see this one very often, that's why maybe the 9090 is more famous, but one of their biggest receivers, their biggest receiver that wasn't a two-piece. So you have the 22,000, 33,000, which is a two-piece set. Some don't consider that a receiver. Some consider it separates, but that's up to you to decide. I don't know what to tell you. I consider them separates. So we have a Kenwood Model 11 here. Now, a lot of these Kenwoods are very closely designed, and sometimes it's hard to really tell the difference besides some of them have the tone controls with the knobs and then like the KR9000G see same same tone controls look a little bit different the faceplate's different but then you're going to come down to this model 11G which has your EQ built on the front so you get a nice EQ built on the front compared to the you know that's the model 11G compared to the model 11 that has your tone controls instead of the EQ. I think I tend to go more towards this 9000G uh, just with that you know uh, gray type faceplate instead of the silver. I actually really like that. All right so in the middle of this giant stack of speakers here we have a couple of receivers. This one is a Nyko 7075 so I like this. It has the nice readable display there. It's going to light up. You have some switch tone <laughs> <laughs> the dust pop off whenever I do that. That's fun. It has your little switch there. This is a really nice one. Nike made really nice stuff. And then going to the side of that, you got a Lafayette LR3030, which was probably their biggest receiver. So Lafayette makes really wonderful receivers. They light up, they look pretty, they sound good. You know, it looks good, sounds good. Lafayette. So what we got to do to clear this wall out is 
take the individual units down, starting with the speakers, which were massively heavy and pretty dusty at that. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, that, oh, yeah, you're behind the camera. I'm sorry. Get them over into another room and then individually take all the other units off, stack those in another room so we could wrap them to go onto our pod. Now, what I didn't explain is that to get the equipment from Texas to Maryland, we got a pod that we're going to build shelves on so that nothing gets damaged, bubble wrap everything, and get it into the pod and have it shipped across the country so that we can get it back at the store. But once we got all that wrapped up and taken upstairs so it was ready to go out to the pod, then we had to go to the Morantz collection. All right, now the other side of the room, this is gonna be a lot of nice Morantz, but first we're gonna start off with some other stuff that, that, that matches that side. So up here we have a Sylvania. CR, oh, I don't even have my glasses, 2743. My uncle actually had one of these brought it into my shop and I redid it for him. So it's pretty cool. I recognize that Sylvania there. Just another off brand, but really nice stuff. Then under here, you got a Pioneer SX850. So it's going to be about the same size as, as your 950. They look very identical. Uh, you have the two signal meters, but no power meters on the 50 series. You see that on the 80 series both sets of meters. So the 850, and which is the same one that's right here, both great receivers. All right, and above that, you have a Kenwood KR4600. I like how they kind of beveled down the the tuning dial uh, to come around the volume knob, kind of a signature to some of the Kenwood pieces. You have Morant separates up here. So we have the model 104 tuner uh, with the matching model 1060 uh, integrated amplifier underneath. So they made the 1060, 1030, you got different different model tuners, but that's a really nice set to have paired together. All right, now we saw the 5000X earlier. These are the 5000As from Sansui. Again, have that nice green glow. And they actually have push buttons up in the dial here. So that's where you're gonna change, I believe your indicators on there uh, for your different sources right there on the top. And then your tape selections down there. Now the one really cool thing about this is it has something that a lot of the monster receivers have. You can actually hook up three pairs of speakers. So you can do A, B, and C, or A and B, or A and C at the same time. As you can see, this one has still some of the original blue tape that they'd put around them when you get them. So you have to take that off. That's That actually goes around on the inside of the wood case. The wood case was separate. Continuing some of the Sonys that we have on the other side, you had the STR V1, that would be their entry level model. Still had meters though. Then you go up to their SVR V2, which same thing, meters, little more switches. You can see how you go from one model to the next and they add a couple different functions uh, when you go to the next model. So you got a loudness mode switch, which I don't look, look like you have a loudness on the top one. So just things that they add as you go up in models, they may look exactly the same at first glance, but when you go into them, they're not. So next we have the entire series of the uh, the 3000 series. So this is going to be your early 80s. I call them the beach receivers because they look beachy to me. They have a beachy blue glow. And this is when Pioneer went from all analog to digital. And this is kind of the midway. So it still had an analog tuning dial right across the front here. So you could tune it and the dial would move, but it also had a digital display. So this is where they were kind of converting all to the 80s digital stuff. So still really nice. So we're gonna start all the way up here at the entry level 3500. And then as we go down, you're gonna see a little more functionality added, right? So up here, we'll go back up for a second. You'll see you got the little 80s looking push buttons on your loudness. But then when you go to the next model up, the upgrade is that 70s switch. So pretty cool. And then the function indicators actually light up. They kind of have that 80s look. So it's a mix. You got 70s here on the bottom and 80s on top. Go down, the receiver is going to get much bigger. You're going to go to the SX3800, which is going to be the same thing. So you get a little more power, but you still have the digital tuning and the power meter right there. Now, all the way down, you got the biggest one, the SX3900, uh, which just has way more features than all the other ones. So you get into... Uh, the turnover control where you can change the amount of treble. It's like a, a two switch control on your bass and your treble. So you can change the amount of uh, crossover there with the, the amount of treble you're changing on your tone controls there. I think they call them twin tone controls, something like that. All right, now looking at the giant Morantz collection, we're gonna start with this one. 
We're gonna start with, this is the early model. This is the Model 22. I would think this is maybe like an early 70s model uh, where it doesn't have that signature glow to it. It's more of just a, I feel like it's a warm white glow when you turn this one on. The controls don't have that, that total morass look like the upcoming ones will, but it still kind of resembles the same thing. Now we're gonna go over into this one next because this was one of the early models. So you're looking at a 2215 here, but if you notice it has a little bit more of a champagne tint than the other models do. So this one is the early models, uh, the 22, they have a etched logo, right? So if you look at the, the newer ones, you get on here, look at this newer model, it's actually painted on, okay? But this one, they etched it in to the front faceplate there. So I think this model, they only made maybe 750 of the 2215s. And they made, you know, the, the champagne etched ones in other models as well. But just if you've never seen the difference, uh, you can tell it's a little bit more gold, but you can immediately tell by just running your finger across the Marantz logo and seeing that it is etched in. So this one's gonna be a 15 watt receiver from Marantz. So you can see in the early series here, like the one we just looked at, they have the 20, this is a 2220 and it has the silver faceplate that goes all the way up to the dial. As we move in years, you'll see the look of the dial change where the black will kind of move down into here the buttons will be in the middle of the black there and you'll see another one where they have like another faceplate on top like a bevel uh, with the controls in so the early series is going to look like this with just the tuning dial in black so you have the 2220 which is an upgrade from the 15 with just five watts and pretty much the exact same controls and when you go up to the 2230 they added the mid-range control so now you have your your base mid-range and treble, and now it's 30 watts instead of 20 watts. So that's the upgrade from the one before. Now going from the 30, we're actually gonna go all the way down to the next shelf down here. And we'll look at the 45. So same thing, it has the mid control, and now it's 45 watts instead of 30. Now the most famous one of all time is gonna be the 70 watt version. So there's a couple other features on this that the 45 doesn't have. You have you know, your two tape monitor switches here, you have a high blend and you have the multi-path. Um, now some of these, if you look at them, these, these push button controls are not the same as on the previous model, right? So on the 2245, your mono switch is gonna be over here and you only have one. When you come over here, you have a mono right and a mono left. Your filters are in the center. So the buttons change. They have a little bit more. They all have the gyro touch tuning, which is Marantz's famous tuning dial. So 2270, the most popular Marantz receiver of all time. And that's also what this one is here, just without the feet. That's why there's a size difference. This is a 2440. So this is a quad Marantz receiver. You can see there's actually, if you can see that, there's four meters. And then you have the balance, which is a slide switch, which you'll see on some of the next series as well. And then your front left to right balance here. So you can control your front left and right, your rear left and right, and then the balance of the audio from the front of the room to the rear. You can turn your remote speakers on or your local speakers, which is just the, the front and the back. And then there's all kind of quad controls, but it is a 40 watt receiver. So you can tell that because it's a 24. That means it's a four channel and then 40 watts. Now we're gonna go right over to here. We got a 2215B. This might be a little harder for you to see over here in the corner. The next series, as I'll show you in a second, uh, this is gonna be your 15 watt Maybe 17 when they add the B, they added maybe two watts to it. So let's go over to the next shelf all the way down so you guys can kind of see what I mean. So five watts more than the 2215B, we have the 2220B. And again, it could be two watts off when they added that B. But you can see the difference in this series. They actually moved the, the dial glass down and the controls were put in that glass compared to up here in the with the Marantz 2245 where it's got the face plate up there. This one does not. This one has the bigger dial it also has that slide balance control which is one of the number one things that are broken on any of these receivers so another 2220b here then you're going to go up to the 2225 that's going to add five watts going to be 25 watts and all these are actually 2225s so they're all the same so we're just going to just going to go down to the next shelf so now i'm not totally sure 
uh, with these, why they went, you know, we had the 2220B, then we had the 2225 without the B, and then you go to the 30B, and they're all from the same series. I get confused on the Bs, so let me know why that is. So you got a 2230B, that's going to be about 32 watts. Again, whenever you see that B, there's probably an extra couple watts uh, to that unit. Then you're going to go to the 2235, this is going to be a 35 watt receiver, and again, the controls are going to look very similar, so you can tell they have the exact same buttons. Everything's the same between the 35 and the 30B uh, or a 30, so the only difference is really going to be that wattage. Then we're going to go up to a 2240. That's going to be 40 watts, but they also added a couple extra switches in here and the mid-range. The other ones have a mid-range. The other ones did have a mid-range, but one thing you have on this and maybe I'll show you, I'll show you on the next row. But there's something I want to talk about on these controls. We'll go down to the next row, look at the B version right down here. So your 2240B, this is going to be about, you know, let's say 42 watts. But you notice on the tone controls, there's actually two lines. The knobs, instead of being, you know, there are two parts, instead of, if you look up here, the 2230, it's just one knob. So your treble is just going to be adjusted right there. But when you go down here, you can actually adjust the right and the left separate. So your back is the right and the front is the left. So if you go and you separate them, you notice the lines separate. That separately adjusts your right and your left channels tone control. So that's a neat feature. What happens with these is a lot of times these, these buttons get lost. And since it's a two-piece set, they're very hard to find. So between like this series, when you get to that and this balance, you you find parts that are that are very difficult to find because if this breaks you're not going to find it if these get lost you're not going to find it few and far between so you have the 40 watt version you go up to the 2250 this is a 50 watt version and then you have the 2250b somebody has to give me a definitive answer i know somebody has it so i need to know the definitive answer on you know if i got a 2250 and i got a 2250b what's up with that all right, so then we're going to go over to the 2275. So this is a 75 watt per channel. And as you can see, lots more control on here, right? So high filters, low filters, loudest, muting. Your speaker main and remotes are built in up here. Uh, you have mono on both channels, your tape monitors. You got a multi-path. That's going to be one of the main differences on this model. Then, of course, tone mode, which was actually on some of the lower models as well where you can change the dip, the amount of the tone you're changing yep we're gonna have to go to this one so this is gonna be your 4230 that means it's a quad receiver at 30 watts per channel and i won't make you stand all the way over here the whole time we'll go to the next shelf and we'll look at uh the 70 watt version of that one so you have the marantz 4270 so it's like a 2270 but it's quad so you notice you have not only the balance uh front to rear then you have rear, left, to right. So you can really take, if you look at your room as four separate corners, you can take and you can position that sound to anywhere in the room that the listener's sitting. So that's a pretty cool function. And like, I mean, you got dimension controls, you got modes, selectors, lots of crazy stuff on the quad receivers. They're not as popular as the two channel, but the quads are really cool. I mean, you have a 100 watt version here, so you see how it goes up to 4,300 instead of 42. That means it's 100 watts. The two changes to a three. Lots of controls on there. I mean, it's really nice when the Marantzes get big like this. I think it's really cool. Going a little smaller, but staying quad, you have the 4,415. That means it's a 15 watt quad. So a lot less features, but still quad. Pretty nice. Now we're going to go up in series a little bit. So remember how I told you. You know, we looked, if we go back all the way up here, you got the faceplate that goes up all the way up to the dial and the buttons are built into the faceplate. Then we went down to the series we were just looking at where the face, where the dial is built down into the faceplate. You have the silver buttons in the middle. The next series actually has a silver plate built into that dial, right? So this is 2216 and the silver face is built into that dial there. So it does still have that balance control. Uh, and a bunch of other, you know, you still have the turns now. Again, left and right are going to be controlled together on this one and not separate on the lower wattage models. You got a 2226. So now they, they kind of took everything and, and kind of added numbers to the end instead of it just saying, 
you know, 2220, 2225, it just changed the model up by one. I don't know if it really means there was a watt difference or not. You could say it's a two channel at 26 watts. You can see this series does have that plate then you go up, so that's gonna be your, your 26 watt model. You're gonna go up to your 38 watt model. And this is where they add that, that separate tone control where you can control the left separate than the right. Again, they still have that, you know, Morantz balance control and the gyro touch tuning. We got another one of the 2238s here and actually all the way across till you get over to the end, which is gonna be your 52 watt model. Uh, the 2255. Now going back across, we're gonna see a little bit bigger. We have a 2265 down here. That's gonna be your 65 watt version where they added a little bit more control to it. You have your, your tone modes, your high and low filter loudness. You can got your speaker switches up here. And then we're gonna go up a little bit more. You got a 2285, this is gonna be 85 watts. And again, same thing as you go up and watch you also usually goes up in features so your filters you have a 30 hertz 9000 hertz uh filters just to change those tone controls just a little bit more and then you got an mpx noise filter which was added and then you got your mono left and right switches so they add more features as the power goes up talking about power going up now we're going up into a 23 model so you have 130 watts here it's a 23 30 bigger receiver you can tell height wise it's a little bit bigger they got to put more into that right so 2330 uh more popular models probably the 2325 the one before this but uh this is a giant receiver right there so we got rid of the black dial and they actually went with the white dial so this is your 2216b next one's a 2218 so no b there not sure why that is uh, but that's gonna be your next look. It glows differently, it doesn't have that black dial. Now going down to the next shelf over here, we're gonna see a big difference in features and power. We got the uh, Morantz model 2226B, so you got more wattage, more features. Again, your tone controls are that left and right separate. Still with the gyro touch tuning, which is really nice. But again, the dial looks a little bit different than it did in the previous, actually a lot different than it did in its previous generation. So you have 2226B, then we're gonna go up to a 2238B. It's gonna add about, you know, 12 more watts to that, give or take. Um, but functionalities are gonna stay about the same. Everything else on it is the same, just a wattage difference. Now, when we go up even more watts, we go to the 2252. That's when they're starting to add a lot more buttons and switches and features, right? So you have your tape copy switches. That The other one did not have this. Tape monitor one, tape monitor two, copy two to one and one to two. So they added more functionality. Remember, as you get up in power, more functionality. And then we got the 2265B, which is gonna resemble the features we just saw in the 52, but a little more power. So I saved these for last because these all have wood cabinets. And that was something that you could add to your Morantz if you wanted to. You could do the wood cabinet without. Because remember, the Morantzes themselves had a Fox wood cabinet aluminum built, you know, built into the cover. So now if you wanted the WC22 or the other model cases, you could add that to your Morantz. So this is your 2230, 30 watts per channel, two channel with the wood case. And then we're gonna go up to the most famous one of all time, the 2270. Looks like they replaced the power switch on this one, did a little bit of a custom flip job. So I've actually not seen somebody do it like that before. That's very interesting. Look at that. Now under here, we have a 2325. This is one of their most popular. Of course, seven, the 70 is the most popular, but this is your 125 watt version with the Dolby built in. You have a whole Dolby system over here. Uh, just a great looking receiver. You got the mid, you know, you get your tone controls left and right separate. It's, it's a really nice receiver. And then talking about quads, you got your 4270, 70 watts into four channels with the wood case. So that's, that's, that's your quad receiver. Now with the Morantz wood cases, they did make multiple sizes. This is kind of your standard, uh, I think it's the WC22. And when you go up here to like the 2325, the case is actually a lot bigger. So there's various models to fit, you know, whatever the size is, but typically there's only about two or three sizes. Going down, sticking with quad, you have a 100 watt model 4300. So this is a quad receiver at 100 watts, very nice looking. And then a 
go into the like late 70s we're going to change the look again as we go down to the 185 watt 2385 receiver here so a lot more controls your signal strength meter you got your tuning meter uh, you got the tuning dial over here with the gyro touch underneath instead of like the one above it where it is next to it so you got it underneath you have your peak lights for left and right, all your indicators across the front. You have a balance switch that goes across. Um, and there's a lot of different parts to the build of the front of this receiver. So it's pretty cool. Very heavy. So nice 185 watt Marantz receiver. So that pretty much does it for this entire Marantz collection. I'm pretty sure this is probably the largest Marantz collection, at least that I've ever seen. There might be the largest collection in the country. So very cool. Now we had to do the same process with the Marantz, but with that, we were able to wrap it in the same room because we had a little more space now that the racks were down and the racks were no easy task either. But we had to take the racks down so that we could build them in the pot. <laughs> Problem solved. So what this would do, this would give space between each unit so nothing would be stacked on top of each other so the wood wouldn't get messed up or anything like hitting that. I mean, I don't know. This pod's got to travel like 3,000 miles across the country. We can't have any mistakes when filling this. So everything's got to be perfectly packed in order so that nothing happens to it on the way. Now, these rooms were only the beginning of this collection. It went all throughout the house. So the next room had Pioneer racks along with more HPM 100 speakers. I was surprised by the unveiling of a wall of HPM 100s, which I totally did not expect. And look, a lot of the stuff in this collection was not in the pictures I saw. So there were surprises all along the way. All right, so let's talk some of the speakers in this room and there's really cool ones. Everybody always said when I had my old YouTube set, they had the big Sansui's in the background. Well, you're gonna love some of the speakers we're gonna see. So we're gonna start right up here with the Sansui SPX 7700. That's like a 15 inch driver. You have a horn tweeter, two smaller tweeters, and the mid range. So there's a lot going on. I love the way they had the silver dust covers in the middle of these speakers. Very, very nice. And then when you go over here, and another series very similar, the SP7500X. 75, so same size driver, different look to the to the uh, dust cover there in the middle, but you have a larger mid-range, like almost the size of a regular driver. It looks like an eight inch mid-range right there. Two tweeters plus the horn. And then in the middle here, you know, being from Baltimore, we see a lot of polk. So you have a, uh, I'm not, I don't even know what model it is, but you know, the polk, you got the mid-range, the tweeter, the very famous in these drivers. And then this one, uh, the base driver is most likely passive. So they did a lot of their base drivers passive and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So we're going from the SPX 7700 to the 9700, which looks pretty different, right? Like look how big this is like next to me, right? So you have the giant 15 inch driver. It's a seven speaker system, an eight inch mid range, three one inch tweeters, and then two of the air motion horns, which is just wild looking. Like this is one of those speakers that's just completely insane looking. You know, how, I don't know how all that combined sounds. I'm sure it sounds pretty good, but they, they, it was in that era where they just wanted to cram like everything they could in the speaker. Cause you know, more, bigger, better, right? I'm sure it sounds different than, than the model up here. Whether it sounds that much better, I don't know, but it sure looks better, right? So. Uh, they did that there, and then you get the, the other matching one over here. They're not deeper than the 77. If you look on the side, they're the same. They're only about that deep. So the cabinets weren't massive like stuff like the HPM 100s that had these big massive cabinets. The Sansui's didn't have that. And they had, you know, the Latisse fronts. And I don't know why they would make a speaker look that good and then cover it up so you couldn't see any of it, but... You know, that's what Sansui was famous for. You know, those were very famous covers back in the day. Now over here, you have another Polk, where you have the two mid-ranges, the tweeter, and then the bass drivers down the bottom. We're gonna go smaller for a minute. Show you the SP5500X. Uh, same thing though, they crammed a lot of stuff in. You have a 12 inch driver, two mid-ranges, look about four inches. You have one like super tweeter, 
And then you have the horn loaded tweeter. So a lot going on there. Five speakers. Not as crazy looking as seven speakers. Uh, you know, but you got another five speaker up here. So they just wanted to cram it as much in as possible. And they weren't the only company that did that. We're going to go up here to look at some of the pioneers. So we'll start over here. Pioneer had the CS series, the CS77A. This is where they had like the brown drivers, very nice drivers. I love the brown drivers. And you have like a 12 inch main driver. You have the, you know, four inch mid range, a tweeter, and then a horn up at the top with the air motion, right? Now, but if that wasn't enough for you and you wanted even more stuff, you go up to the 88, which if you can see this, this has one bass driver, two mid ranges, two tweeters and a double size air motion tweeter so there's actually six where if you look if you go backwards and we go over here again you got three so they really upped the game doubled everything except the main driver and uh made the the 88s now, now i think around here somewhere there's 99s we'll find them if they exist now over here we have i think this is a sonic not a brand anybody's really heard of but they did the same thing right so even the off brands were doing this where you take a giant you know massive driver you do multiple mid-ranges multiple tweeters you know super tweeters in this one does it sound any better i don't know but it looks cool and that's what that's what it was in more functionality it was the same with the receivers you know back then the more buttons the more switches the more lights bigger better better right and it still should be that way but it's not now that everything got on the pod and it was completely full front to back, side to side, I and mean, we were talking a 16 by eight pod full of hi-fi, it was time to get it back to Baltimore. But I think they forgot something. You know, I may have to give you guys a sneak peek before, before we actually go somewhere. I'll get in here, I can show you guys some stuff. Wait, what are you doing? No, no. See, we'll see you in 3,000 miles, I'll Len. See you Wait, I'm still in here. Oh, crap. Guys? Oh, jeez. Guys? Guys? Let me out. It's hot. So now that everything is in the store, you might wanna know how can you get your hands on it before anybody else? So I put a link down below in the description. You just go to the page, fill out the information, and we will contact you with the code so you can download the entire list with all the pricing before any of it's done, before anybody else sees it, for your chance to get the stuff first. So we're keeping it very exclusive if you want it before it goes out to everybody. So again, go below this video, click that link, you're gonna enter your name, email, and phone number, and then we'll contact you to give you that list so you can see everything first. And even if you're not watching this right when it comes out and you see it later, you can still get your hands on this list and see what is left out of this massive hi-fi collection, because there's plenty. I mean, 200 different receivers and various components in this collection, racks, like just wild stuff that you're gonna want. I mean, I wanted some of it, why not? How often does this happen? And maybe you're out there and you have a giant hi-fi collection that you wanna sell, but you don't wanna deal with like selling each individual piece to different people and having to do all that crazy work. Maybe you want your hi-fi collection shown on the channel. So we put all that in the one. So one of the new things we were offering is we can come out and sell your entire hi-fi collection. So if you want a video like this done of your giant hi-fi collection, be sure to contact us. We'll ask for some pictures and lists and all that stuff, but uh, we can get it sold for you. And you won't have to do any of that crazy, weird Craigslist Facebook marketplace work that just scares the crap out of me. So <laughs> give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to say that? Yeah, All right, so call us. Hey, Spencer, the pod's here. Have you seen Lenny at all? You know, I, haven't, I don't think I've heard from him or seen him since Texas, man. He hasn't been back to work. Huh. Well, let's, let's, start, uh, let's start unloading this stuff. Might as well, there's a lot of work to do. Right. Might as well open her up. I really hope this key works. Oh. All right. It's Lenny! Lenny! Water. What are you doing, man? Uh, do we make it? <laughs> yeah, you're, we're, we're oh. You should have oh. just taken the plane with everybody else. What the uh, heck, man? I was like, what happened to you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, come on out, man. Oh. 
Wait, where was I? Texas. San Antonio. Uh -huh. Days ago. Weeks? A week been, ago? It's been days. What have you guys been doing? Working the store. Selling stuff, man. Really? Selling stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Mikey, didn't you notice I wasn't on the plane? No, actually I didn't, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel pretty bad about this now. <sighs> I mean, I've been in these clothes for weeks. <laughs> It, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's it <laughs> so awful, man. <laughs> I wouldn't open the cooler. <laughs> Especially not that one. <laughs>